Okay, let's just assume that you can see me and hear me. Um, I'll go on today for the first hour and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, welcome to the first live studio session. Um, I've decided that it's time to, to get my act together when it comes to rebuilding and even finding where I am today in all this crazy virus stuff that has everybody locked up and shut in at home. So I'm attempting to, to paint, to be in the studio every day, maybe to motivate. Um, I'm going to need your feedback. I want you guys to tell me what it is you're looking for. Um, I have a canvas that I brought in today, which is a wood substrate. This is not necessarily going to be a lesson. This is going to be more about studio, about you pulling out your art supplies, whatever they may be, if it's jewelry or um, drawing or, or, or doodling, or it doesn't matter what it is. My thing is painting, so I'm going to work, be working on a canvas. So at any time, if you have questions, I should be able to look back at my other screen and and see, sorry, I'm just trying to figure this out. I'm just trying to get both screens visible and I'm also trying to communicate with my guests. It says, this chat is private for you and your stream participants. So, hmm. Communicate with my guests. I don't see how that's happening. Okay, eventually I'll get this figured out and we should be able to um, answer questions and things together. If all you're seeing is my back today, then it is clearly not working. Um, I want you to be able to see my, my piece of art so let's see, you can see my hands, and then hopefully with this microphone that I have plugged in, you can hear me talking. Um, on the screen that I have right uh, to my right back here, it shows a split screen with me in both of them, but I don't know what's happening. Anyway, apologies again for all this technical stuff. Um, during this isolation time, it's hard to find anybody who is willing to um, come in and give me a hand. So, I can't read anything that you guys are typing if you are typing anything. Um, apologies again, I'll figure this out. But let's just get started. And if you have the, um, if you have your art supplies or you're just watching this for inspiration, I've decided on a topic for today. And my topic will be digging deep and starting where you're at. So during this crazy time, if I get the screen here, during this crazy time of self-isolation, um, I think everybody finds themselves in a position where we don't really know, nobody knows what's going on. Um, you watch the news, you listen to your friends, you listen to your friends take some things, you listen to reports, and all I'm really understanding about all this is that there is a complete insecurity in not knowing what's going on. And for me, the only way I can block out all that noise is to keep on keeping on. And a lot of you kids say, you know, well, that's hard to do because you, um, you know, your life is on hold and, and you have no revenue streams and you have no, you know, everything has changed, but the reality is everything has changed for everybody. So what I'm asking you to do is to make the decision to dig deep. And to dig deep, it's basically making the decision to find your creative voice. It doesn't matter if that's in art or in 
performance or singing or journaling or it doesn't matter how public it is, it doesn't matter how private it is. I believe that creativity is something that can actually save you at this time. Um, so for the past two weeks, uh, maybe a little more than that, that has been a little more than that, I've been feeling really sick and it was really interesting because the timing of everything started when people, there was no self-isolation at this point where I live, but it was at a time when, when the virus was starting to make serious headlines and it was imminent. It's coming to our um, city. It's coming near us. It's coming home. And I think everybody's found that time when you remember, or you're going to soon enough, when it came home, when it hits your country, when it hits your city, when it starts affecting you. When everything is outside of us, we don't really see it as our problem, I suppose. And for me, I didn't really feel it until I started to get sick. And then with word of this virus going around, I just had a regular winter cold thing happening. But with word of this virus, with every cough I, I took, with every shortness of breath, with every labored and intensive breath I took, I was very much aware that my friends and people around me would be afraid of me. So I've never felt like that before. I mean, why would anybody feel like that? When you do feel sick normally and you think, oh, I feel for me, I'm just going to stay home. It's sort of for your own protection, but it was the first time that I felt fearful of what others might look at me as. Um, patient zero that person who brought it to Ottawa. I didn't know what people would think, but the fear was definitely there. And so I went into self-isolation very early. I stayed home for over three, three weeks. And um, during that time, the protocol came for everybody to stay home. And I started to feel a little more solidarity in the fact that um, I wasn't the only one in this position. And then from there, I started to feel sorry for myself. I started to feel whatever. I started to feel lazy about my art. And it's easy, I think, in a time of, of I guess, hopelessness for us to fall into that, that um, trap of feeling hopeless as well. So this is open studio. It's not meant to be dismal. It, what it's meant to do is it's meant to bring the arts community together. And once I can actually start chatting with you, we will be having conversations daily and we will start to understand each other a little bit better in our position. But my hope is that I can actually, um, let me see if I can do that. My hope is that I can actually bring a little bit of hope, a little bit of, um, not understanding, because I don't know anything more than anybody else, that's the wrong word. I want to inspire people to, to find their creative voice in this crazy time. And I for sure don't have any more answers than anybody else, but what I do have is I have a deep understanding and a deep knowledge of creativity saves. I do understand that 100%. When I need to go inside, I just need to pick up a pencil. I just need to close my eyes and listen to some music. I just need to go for a walk in nature. That to me is all creativity. Every once in a while, I even get the urge to bake or do something like that. I find that that's all a very... Um, understandable, creative outlook. And I want you to dig deep during this time and to find your own creative outlet. Um, so join me as I will paint until this whole thing is over every day, live from noon until one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. 
Um, it will be available for repeat every day so that you can on Facebook so that you can join later at your own convenience. Um, understanding also that some people are actually still working and not everybody has the, um, this new time slot like I do right now. Anyway, I really hope that you're not just seeing my back and you can't hear me because I am going to start working and I'm just going to start talking about um, digging deep and, and what this means to me. So let's see if I can get... Oh, I really wish I knew what I was doing. Okay. Let's just assume you can hear me and let's start over. So um, I have a prepared board here. Like I said, this is not a class. This is more what I'm doing, but I'm going to walk you through my process as I paint. Um, just because it, it may inspire you. It may give you, I don't know, a little insight as to how I work and maybe that might influence how you work. So what I've done on this panel, this is just a wood panel, um, is I've attached, I've glued a whole bunch of newspaper um, print to this. And I've got old newspapers in here from Expo 86. And then I've also got some overlaying pieces of pattern paper. Um, I glued it all down using Mod Podge, which is, you know, really nothing that uh, that secret about that I just used a paper glue Mod Podge and I attached all my paper to the board and then I've allowed it to dry and then I went back and I sanded it so if you can see little bits and pieces that are coming off and all that that to me is part of my process now when I stand back and I look at this, it's clearly, it's just a background. It just has a few things glued down. Um, but because my process generally involves lots and lots of layers, I'm just gonna start attaching papers and seeing if anything starts to come out of it. So the freedom to create for me is definitely comes from a place of enjoying the process. And I know that that sounds entirely um, trite, maybe even a bit trivial, maybe even too simplistic, but I'm gonna tell you the absolute truth and that is this is how I paint. I paint with zero intention initially. So I've got behind me, which um, I don't trust myself to turn the camera right now, but I've got um, a big paintbrush and some Mod Podge, and I'm just going to apply the glue liberally. Now the key for me is to not let it get dry, so my brush is always a little bit wet. And then I'm going to apply the glue to some paper and start overlapping the two. Now I'm just pushing that down, but using some kind of a squeegee, a credit card, or a scraper, I'm just going to start attaching things. Now, I generally at this point start very monochromatic. As you can see, everything that I'm applying is pretty much brown at this point. Um, I guess the reason for me doing that is that I haven't got a, an idea yet and I haven't got a process, so I just want to make sure that what I am putting down could potentially be visible, but it doesn't need to be. So if I put down something that has a lot of color to it or a definite image or something early on, then I'm kind of committed to that too early for my liking. So I'm just going to start overlapping a few things that are colored similarly. Um, now, you might be asking why I didn't put glue on the back of that piece of paper. Um, because that one's a piece of tissue paper, it doesn't require me to, um, to add that at that time. Um, 
I really wish there was a way I could check this to make sure that you guys are all seeing what you're seeing. But anyway, um, feedback is welcome. Again, I'm asking you to check me some class because I'm doing this solo and I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I hope it's not all for naught and that even if you can't see me, I'm hoping at least you can hear me. I'm hoping that whatever you are doing at home, you're just finding your muse, you're just pulling out your creative stash, you're just pulling out any creative tools and materials that you may have, keep you busy during this time. hear something we can't see the art okay let me try that that's good thanks that's very good feedback can we see the art now whoever just texted me that was very helpful because I can't see it in the chat so let me know if you can see both screens I have two screens going one that has my face and one that has my painting. So if whoever just texted me could just give me a little feedback, we can see the art. Awesome. Okay. Can you also see me and hear me, mystery person? I'm waiting. Okay. So you can see I'm just adding a few things. All right, so when you talk about adding um, papers, like I was saying before, I like, we can't see the art. Oh, you can't see the art. Okay, this is crazy because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, sorry guys. I am really, really trying here to make sure that you can see both the art and me audio only let me try and fix that can't see both all right all right i may just have to turn this on to regular old facebook live only one screen still just okay so now would be a great time for the okay. Why can't I share the screen? All right, let me see if I can't figure this out, guys. Give me one second, because obviously what I've been doing is not really working. So share the screen. Cancel that. Invite guests. Well, that should be me. All right. So apparently, now you can see the one behind me, but at least you see the painting. So you know what, why don't we just stay with that one for now. Again, I'll have to figure out what went wrong. And then for now, let's just, I'll just carry on. I'll adjust that so you can see the painting a little bit better. And we'll just carry on. And hopefully by tomorrow, I get this sorted out. It seems very self-explanatory, but clearly it's not because what I'm seeing on my screen is I see both cameras. So I don't understand. Anyway, we'll figure this out. For now, it, this isn't about me painting. This is about you painting So and finding your muse. So like I said, pick up your own brushes, pick up your own um reasons for painting and just start we all have our excuses we all have the fact that our lives are changing right now we all have so many things going on that are preventing us from from moving forward so at this time i'm going to ask you to be really brave 
and just call your own shot. Just totally call it like it is. I had to do that with myself when I got sick. I had to say to myself that this was not going to be, somehow it switched again to one on front. Oh, that's not helpful. All right. So I don't know how to get the split screen and I definitely don't want to mute it because I have my microphone on so that you can hear me because yesterday somebody told me that it wasn't really uh, working that well. So. I'm going to just leave this one on. Hopefully that you can see that. Anyway, like I said, this is about you today anyway. I want you to call your own shot. I want you to make the time for you. And I want you to realize that in the midst of all this insanity, you can find peace. And believe you me, it makes a lot of sense that if you can find peace through your own creativity. Um, I will start online classes soon once I get this all figured out, um, all this technical stuff. I just decided that in order for me to... Oh, no audio. Audio...
I'm really hoping that you can hear me and see me. Um, but like I said, the whole purpose of this isn't isn't to be, this isn't to be a lesson. This is meant to motivate. I want you all to find that creative voice right now and really listen to it. Um, for me, the creative voice is really loud right now because I've been so cooped up at home before this started, that now I feel it's important for me to start to um, get back into some kind of a groove. Obviously, everybody is feeling the same thing. I am definitely not the only one out there who is feeling that this is all weird right now and, and that we don't have answers. But the topic for the day, again, is dig deep. So what that means for everybody is going to be something entirely different. And like I said, this is not a lesson. This is just meant to inspire. Every day, I want you to pull out your art supplies at a designated time. Turn on this video, but more importantly, turn on your own music. Turn on whatever it is that inspires you. I'm just using a mixture of a couple paints here. And I'm going to try to get that into those scratches that I just made. It's a very ugly, weird color, but that's okay. I'm just, I'm creating some, some lines for myself. Um, because I have no direction in this painting, it's kind of mirroring. Actually, it's not kind of mirroring. It's exactly mirroring where I'm at right now. I'm confused. I have no answers. I'm the same as everybody else. Um, so I am trying to find a bit of direction, I suppose. Well, that's a great word. I'm trying to find a bit of direction in a very chaotic time. So I'm going to keep this paint wet just by spraying a little. because it dries very fast in here. So now I'm gonna grab my baby wipes. And I'm just gonna to start to remove some of that paint. And you're gonna see that the paint is resting in my scratches. So what that's doing for me is giving me direction, like we just talked about. In a directionless world right now, we all need a little direction. So once we get this audio, camera, video thing figured out, I promise you I'll bring you actually some DIY videos and some actual direction. But for now, I just want you to pull out your own art supplies and just decide. Decide that you're going to take control of your life again right now, especially in a time when... Control is almost a bit of a luxury. I love this part of a painting for me because it's full of possibility. It's got infinite potential. And I just love that now those lines and those gouges might actually be giving me something to hold on to. And I'm going to call that hope. Because when I see those lines, I do feel hopeful that this painting might find a direction, might find... a bit of a pattern maybe. 
I don't know, somehow that feels really right to me. So I might just follow along with that. So I'm going to get some water. Oh, here we go. And I'm just going to start to add a bit of paint following some of my own guidelines. So when I say guidelines, it is absolutely just that. I just painted or scratched in rather a whole bunch of lines and those lines have given me a bit of direction. So at this time, I think we could all use a coach and that coach might as well be you. You can set for yourself goals. You can set for yourself timeframes, ambitions, restrictions, whatever it is you need right now. For me, I have committed to coming on live every day at noon. And that's my commitment to you so that I might be offering you a path to discipline. So a path to discipline to me actually just means disciplining yourself to do something that makes you happy. Right now there are so many things that are making us unhappy and I know myself and I know that when pushed and when challenged, I can do amazing things. So I have decided to push myself, to challenge myself, to go beyond my excuses and to paint live with you every day for as long as this takes. Who knows how long we're gonna be self isolating at home, quarantined from the world, from spreading a disease that is making its way across the world. So I challenge you to discipline yourself to do this with me. And set your own goals, set your own parameters. What does this time look like for you? What does this, this isolation time mean? I have set so many goals and expectations for myself and at times it can feel overwhelming and I just want to have a place where I can just not be structured, not be planned, and just to let my creativity play. In that play, I find an extreme, oops, I find an extreme amount of peace and freedom. I have a solo show coming up at uh, the gallery that represents me here in my hometown. And I don't know. At first I was a little stressed out thinking what's going to happen? Is my show even going to be a show? How many paintings am I going to have ready? And planning a show, a solo show for anybody who's done that, it can be really stressful because you just wonder, is it going to be good enough? Am I going to have enough pieces? Are they all going to be strong pieces? What's going to, how is the show going to look? if I'm not prepared, um, there's, there's many variables and many reasons to get yourself into a bit of a, a worrisome state. So I've just decided that every day when I'm disciplining myself to paint live with you, I'm committing to not having a plan. And as you can see, I'm just casually following some lines and I'm not making this about a product. I think 
when we make art, we worry so much about the product. What's it going to look like? Who's going to buy it? Who is this for? What is the objective? And for me, I just, I don't want to have to worry about that right now. There's enough things that can occupy your mind right now than to worry about this being a product. This to me is a vacation. This is the beach. This is an escape. This is a resort with a margarita in one hand and the sun shining on my face in the other hand. That's what I really hope you can find in your art practice is if you have tasks you have to do, you have to stay true to your art form, you have to stay true to your discipline, you have a show to paint for, you have clients to impress, you have yourself and your obligations to live up to. Perhaps that's all true. But right now, I'm just asking you to question, what would it look like if I just ignored all that right now and I just made something for the sake of making something? And that's all I'm trying to do with the studio is to encourage you to just make something for the sake of making something. Right now. Because I love my scratches. Like I said, scratches offer me direction and line. You may find a different way to do scratches and, or, or line in your work. Um, but to me, this is play. I'm just going to stand back and look at it. Keep turning. Keep observing. Not bad. More paint. More paint. But where? Well, follow some more lines, I suppose. Because I'm broadcasting live, I don't think I'm allowed to use music. But I encourage you, if you're at home, crank up the tunes. Find stuff you like. Listen to it. Enjoy it. I can't. But rest assured that when the cameras go off, the music goes up, because I like my music loud. And the dance party begins, because that's what inspires me. I have to say, I since we've been self-isolating, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, I've had a million creative ideas. Like a million creative ideas. I've been acting on a few and um, I, I'm really having to find or, or find the strength to fight back some of the ideas. Um, if the world speaks to you in creative thought, then I definitely am being um, bombarded with creative thought right now. Um, for any of you who follow my, my uh, Instagram and my channels, I have a few, but one of them is a curated nest. And a curated nest is um, a store that features art and home decor and vintage finds. And basically it's an outlet for all things creative in our city and my business partner and I, Judy, we've been working really hard on creating a behind the scenes um, online store. So this is not only for, um, for the times being as they are, this was always part of the goal. It just now we actually find ourselves having the time to do it. So maybe it was a phase two part of the plan, maybe it was a phase three, 
who knows what the phase was. That doesn't even matter. The, the point is we're doing it right now. And doing an Instagram and doing a, a blog, I guess, we'll start um, for that for that channel, for a curated nest, um, has been really fun and, and challenging for me at the same time because it allows me to think about art in an entirely different way. And what that means is right now, I'm finding that being able to create just for me, like I'm doing right now, just painting and seeing where this painting takes me, is really exciting and a little bit nerve wracking because I'm like, what am I making? What am I making? Is it going to look good at the end of the day? I don't have to worry about that really. So I can just turn that noise off. It doesn't matter if it's good or not. It's, it is what it is. But for a curated nest, I'm finding that the, the voice has to be a little bit different in that, in that I'm trying to help people in a different way with that website and with that um, channel because what Judy and I are trying to accomplish with that is for people to be able to incorporate art into their, their life and to be able to incorporate vintage finds and anything that you can make. It's more of like a, a DIY and kind of a home decorating vein. And a lot of people have told me that they don't know how to, to buy art or they don't know, you know, how they're supposed to react when they see art. They don't know a lot about art. So what we're trying to accomplish with a curated nest is to be able to pull together vignettes that incorporate art and vintage finds. And when I say vintage finds, it's only relevant today because so many people, young people, are starting to inherit things from parents and grandparents and, and, and relatives that have passed on. And they don't know what to do with this stuff, so they consider it all junk and everything gets donated to Value Village. It's one of my missions to show people how to incorporate that into um, your own lifestyle. Uh, it occurred to me this morning I was in my, my house having my coffee this morning and it occurred to me that I could go, whoops, I could go into the powder room at the front um, to void myself of my morning coffee um, in a different bathroom that I'm accustomed to because I don't know why when we're self-isolating I feel like now I'm discovering my house for the first time. Anyway, so I, I used a, a powder room that I don't often use. And when I was in there, I looked up and I saw my grandmother's old ornate gilded mirror. And I have it in my bathroom. This is, I think, our second or third house that I've moved this mirror from. I remember it vividly hanging in my grandmother's house. And it was in her house. It was, you know, it looked like it belonged in a grandmother's house. It was hanging way too high for anybody to really use it for anything other than checking your hat, I suppose. Um, if you were wearing a hat at the time. I don't know that mirrors were used then to expand the feel of the room or anything like that. But something in me when I was, like, just older than a teenager, when my when the house was sold, something in that mirror said to me, you should hang on to this. And so I've moved it around from house to house. We broke it at one point. I had to have a new mirror cut for it, like all kinds of things. But it occurred to me when I saw this mirror, just how beautiful the lines were and how ornate they are. And it's still in the original gold painting. And it made me feel that I almost felt sorry for all the mirrors out there that have been thrown in the landfill or been tossed away because someone couldn't see their potential and their beauty. And my mind fast forwarded to 
to one day having to sell our house. And somebody coming into that powder room and saying, does the mirror come with the house? Because someone else would see that the potential in that mirror has been finally achieved in this little powder room because it truly is beautiful in there. Like it, it, I hung it in there because it fit initially. I hung it in there because I didn't have another, um, I didn't have another mirror to put there. But now I actually see the beauty. And, and that is one of the goals for me of a curated nest is to use my creativity to help people understand the, the place and the purpose of art and vintage and things that I find creative and beautiful, I suppose. Getting back to what we're doing here, whatever you're doing, is I'm gonna stand back and I'm gonna keep looking at this because I'm starting to see some direction. I'm starting to see a story. I don't know what it is. That landscape that I once saw is gone. But an interesting thing about working wet on wet, meaning that the glue is still wet, the paper is still wet, paints are still wet, things haven't really had a chance to solidify and dry. I can keep playing with it, manipulating it, seeing what it's going to look like. I'm still not sure I found the direction for this painting yet. It's almost like it jumps out at me and talks to me and says, yep, that's it. I don't know, that one seems kind of cool. But I just don't know yet. So, this way, the way I first painted it, I don't know, it seems off. I think I'm going to go back to this way for now. Maybe I'll keep working it on this way. So, what I liked about this is that this part feels like it's grounding the painting down. This has movement and lines, so it's taking me through. This... I don't know yet. Let's paint it a darker color and see what happens. Um, I am never afraid of adding a little paint and trying something. So honestly, what have you got to lose when you're painting? Nothing. Um, you're just adding a layer that can be removed. Every layer to me is beneficial. If I don't like what I do, the best part for me is that I can take it out. And once I take it out, I can almost rest assured that what I've left behind by trying to remove it is going to be way more interesting than not having tried it at all. So I know some of you who are watching today, if you can hear me, I'm so hoping you can hear me. Um, there's a few of you that I've worked with long enough that I know it's not that you're stuck in your ways. It's just that you know one way of performing. And when I say performing, I mean that with the greatest amount of love. We're performing for ourselves. We're, we're making sure that this little audience of, of one, our little ego, is paying attention and it's always critiquing us. So... I'm going to hope that within this, this time of creative play that we're going to do together every day, that maybe we can learn to silence that little voice a little bit and just play and discover. Because to me, the greatest part about art is not when you've produced this product that you go, wow. The world is going to love me and rejoice and I've knocked another one out of the park. That's not what we're going for in this. We're going for self-discovery. Who are you as an artist? Do you even know? I don't know who I am. Actually, that's not true. One day we'll get into that. But 
I know exactly who I am as an artist now, but I'll tell you one thing. It's my art that showed me who I was. It was my art that when I sat down and, and looked at it, can make me understand why it is I paint what I paint. Maybe too heavy a topic for today, but let's just get to the point where you can start to paint without that crazy little voice that is probably right now going on in your head as you're painting and you're judging your work and you're saying this isn't doing much or I'm just making a mess. How many times have I heard that? In my own head and from my students. I don't care how many messes you make. The more messes you make, the more you are actually learning to figure out who you are as an artist. Finding that voice is the most important gift you can find to your to give to yourself. And for my students, you know, you know who you are out there, right? Finding your voice takes time. It takes time. It takes courage. Because before there's going to be nice things to look at, there's also going to be a lot of ugly things to look at. And I mean that with the, the most compassion that I can muster up as a teacher is that your art may look ugly for a while. Um, and like I said, I say that with, with compassion and love, but I tell you, I make a lot of ugly things. And then those ugly things teach me a lot about who I am. They teach me a lot about my own art. They teach me a lot about painting in general. Because I'm self-taught, I have to figure things out. I have to discover things for myself. So playing with all the tools I have at my disposal is my ultimate goal. I just want to play. I just want to discover. I just want to see what happens when I do this. I want to see what happens when I do that. That's, that's play. And you can take hundreds of courses. You can take thousands of courses. You're going to learn techniques and techniques and techniques. And my good friend Andrea would call that your toolbox. So you're filling your toolbox with lots of tools and, and your, your techniques. And maybe some of them will become your go-tos. You'll only know that by practicing them. And maybe some of them will never be of any use to you at all. But they are not going to be there. You're never going to find that one perfect course that is going to give you everything you need. What you need, and here's a secret, what you need to find out everything you need to know about creativity is to, to practice, to get in the trenches, to put in the work and to make a lot of ugly stuff. So there are no mistakes and I'm sure everybody will tell, oh, I'm a happy mistake and yeah, that's all great. But the thing is we have to actually get in there and do something different every day within our artwork. I believe that if you keep making the same thing over and over and over, that we're not growing and we're not receiving the benefits that art can give us. Does that make sense? The benefits you can get from making art are only what you will allow the benefits to be. So if I keep making things and practicing and learning I'll never be able to repeat that line again. 
I'll never be able to get that exact thing to happen again. But that's not what I'm going for. I'm not learning to master my, my, my techniques or my approach. I'm learning to master the response to what's happening. So for me, I get some areas look a little ugly. That's okay. Actually, a lot of areas look a lot of ugly. That's okay. I'm still working and I'm still responding. I'm tempted to turn it, but part of me is saying no. How long have we been chatting here, guys? 59 minutes. Holy cow, it's been an hour. So you know what? I'll pull this out again tomorrow. And I'll go home, and maybe even I will figure out what went wrong with this video. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Um, let's hope. Um, maybe I can get someone to come and help me tomorrow. Anyone who knows anything about live streaming. Anyway, I will do my research, and um, we'll see if we can't get that to work. I'm going to actually turn the camera around. Let's turn this camera around and see if I can't get a better close-up of this painting. Anyway, you can see there's lots to respond to. I've got lots of opportunity to respond to this tomorrow. I'm going to let this dry because you can only work wet on wet for so long before it starts to um, turn into mud. And I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about because mud is something that a lot of us produce all the time because we keep working a painting. So if you are at that stage where you've created a painting and you're ready to... Um, or, or you're, you're, you don't have to just quit because I'm quitting is what I'm trying to get at. If you're at the stage where you want to keep working, but your painting is kind of muddy, I'm going to recommend that you stop because wet paintings do need a good chance to dry. So I would stop at this point and I pull out another canvas or another piece of paper and just start working on a new one. And our momentum is always a little bit hesitant, a little bit sluggish to start something new because this one is starting to take us somewhere and we're starting to get excited about it and we want to keep going but the best thing you can do for this one is to let it dry and start another one. And trust me, once you get going on the next one, you'll start out the same way, you've got nothing going on and all of a sudden you'll add a few lines, all of a sudden you'll add something that makes you go, oh, there's something to look forward to here and you'll just keep responding. So with that, I'll say keep painting, please. Keep crafting, keep making, keep jewelry doing, keep whatever it is you're doing, keep doing it. Discipline yourself, same time, every day, for at least whatever it is that you're going to allow yourself to do it. But honestly, set that in your schedule, at just like a job. Right now, if you have the time, but you just don't have the motivation, that's what I'm here to help you do, is to find that motivation, to dig deep, to claim this time for yourself, to become a better artist, and to become more comfortable with this uncertainty that we're living with right now.